Ahoy there, mudlarking friends, and welcome to part two of my most recent trip up to the Mersey estuary. Let's have a little look at what I found this time. This is a um, really valuable piece of foreshore in the, you know, years and years of history and that we're able to just come and walk and enjoy it is a really special thing. Well, I'm pretty sure that's got here from World War II rubble clearance. Looks like it would have been part of a really kind of high-end building. There's not so much in the way of finds this time because everything is covered in this really thick mud and sand. There are a few fragments here and there. Okay. Dennis, it's a Dennis tile. Bomb. It's a big one. In 1867, Henry Dennis discovered vast amounts of high quality Etruria Marl clay in Ruabon, Wales. Hafford Brickworks and Clay Pit came into life, and the business flourished, catching the wave of high demand for red brick and terracotta. The Red Works, as they were known, was the birthplace of probably the best known red tiles and bricks in Britain. By 1934, the Red Works was being run by Henry Dyke Dennis, the son of our original Henry Dennis. And this is where it became a private limited company known as Dennis Ruabon Limited. So this tile here could date from anywhere between 1934 and its closure in 2008, although given the location of the find and the age that it seems to have, it's likely to date between 1934 and 1946. We've also got Ruabon bricks here. You can see workers in the clay pits and the tile and brickworks. Okay, who have we got over here bricks wise? Let's see. That's a shame. I like that one, but it's a half. I've got to stick to my rules. Up ho. Okay, I <laughs> think we can find out what that is. Here we go. I've got a brick. Let's replace the other brick in how good it is. Honk and Newell, no, Monk. What? Oh, I'm... Oh, God. Oh, look at that. Okay, guys, well, here we go. It's Ruabon again. I should just explain that just across the water and down a bit, you come to Wales. So this is the Mersey estuary, just across the water, south, down a little bit further, there's Wales. Now, Ruabon, is in an area of Wales close to Wrexham. And there were three brick making companies in Ruabon, and that is why we're seeing all these bricks here. They are fairly local to Merseyside. Now, what is interesting though, is that Monk and Newell closed down in 1920. So these really modern looking bricks here are actually even older than the Dennis tile we just saw. What's this then? Is this brick a keeper? Dalton, no less. There we go. Stick it up there. Okay, up ho. Being Up Holland, formerly the Up Holland Brick and Tile Company, and they were affiliated with the Ravenhead Sanitary Pipe and Brick Company. Now check out some of their bricks because their logo is fantastic. I love them. They were located on Burton Head Road in between Ravenhead Collieries number 7 and 8 and Pits 9 to 11. Now, the company was established around 1850 by Edwards, Horn and Kelly and they were trading as Lavender & Co. And their premises was at the Ravenhead Pottery in Liverpool. Now in May 1857, Edwards left the partnership and the firm became Horn and & Kelly and that's when it became the Ravenhead Sanctuary Brick Company. This partnership carried on until about 1874 and then that was Dissolved. David Horn seemed to have taken over the business. In 1875, it was then registered as the Ravenhead Sanitary Pipe and Brick Company. Up Holland Brick and Tile Company was then subsumed in 1908. So there you go, they became Ravenhead and Up Holland, Up Ho, as we see here on the bricks. All right, guys, I think we have a winner. We have a winner in the bricks. Let's 
Okay, I've hopped onto the old voiceover again as the wind was getting too blustery, but believe you me, I was excited about this brick. I think I might have even let out a couple of squeals. I'm not really sure why, because it hasn't got that much age to it, but I know that I love the arrangement of the text. I think that's it really, just the arrangement of the text on the brick and possibly the colours. So this is another Lancashire brick maker and they made their products from clay and millstone grit shales. One of over a hundred brick makers in Lancashire, the Withnell Brick and Terracotta Company operated two brickworks and although they existed before 1912, they weren't formally registered until that year. So there you go, this is a Withnell brick and it's from the Withnell Brick and Terracotta Company. Here's a nice interesting feature. Okay, what you can see here is actually just a brick lined chamber of the 18th century salt refinery. And now this has become visible since I visited last time due to coastal erosion. Thistle Bricks, J.G. Stein Brickworks, that's the Milne Quarter Fire Clay and Ganister Works in Bonnybridge, Stirlingshire. Now, J.G. Stein made bricks in Scotland. They had works in Castle Carey, Bonnybridge, and also at Manuel near Linlithgow. Thistle was a 38% alumina fire brick, but the Stein brands varied in content, and some of their other bricks are stamped with nettle or Stein, but I love that thistle and nettle for these Scottish bricks. Here is another famous one, the Nori brick, Nori brick or Nori brick, an iron hard engineering brick, and they are also known as Accrington bricks. Now, like flattens, they get about everywhere. Interestingly though, and I mean, this is really interesting, Nori bricks were used to build the foundations of the Blackpool Tower and also, get this, the Empire State Building. So how about that then? Ooh, what's this one? This tile here, I've had some trouble finding the maker of. I think it might possibly be the non-porous tile company from High Car Tileries near Chatterley. I'm just not sure though. So if you guys have anything to add to this identification, please let me know in the comments. Huge chunks of rubble. Someone's lost their nightclub toilets here. There we go, flattens, they get everywhere from my hometown to an estuary up north. And what I've got here, this looks more like something pretty and dainty. There we go. <laughs> I mean, the location is kind of wacky. Um, all right, a bit of pink for you. Just started digging this out. It looks just like a flower pot, but what's that? Just a flower pot with drainage, I guess. There we are, that's cool. Another jar-like thing, <clears throat> some stoneware, 80 ounce, that's going to come home with me. Oh, there we go. Sweet. I'll make sure no one's living in there. And if they're not, we'll take that home. It's the zone. It's the zone for the holy plant pots. Now they say you learn something new every day and you absolutely do with mudlarking. As they say on the old adverts, these aren't just any old terracotta pots. These are amaryllis pots. These extra holes in the side are there specifically for drainage. 
to keep the amaryllis at that kind of moist but not too wet consistency they love to be in to grow. I love these and I wish I could find a whole one. There we go. Right, what have we got here? Homes. Well, you know I'm going to take that. I'm a sucker for anything with a name on it. So there we go. Holmes is coming. Holmes with me. Dun, 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 dun. We've got a bit of sewer pipe. The old down pipe, the old classic in the old abandoned forest. There's loads of this root stuff. I'm going to take that. Do we think it's part of a drain? Yeah. Drain it's cover. That's going to be used in my artwork, you know me. Here we go, Dad says he's got something. Let's have a look. What's it going to be? Oh! Huh. That's cool and weird. No idea. Well, I keep that as a little bit of a weird object. Thanks, Dad. Okay, all right, well, let's let Dad have the last find there. Not really sure what that is. I've had some suggestions. If you know, again, please tell me in the comments, even to make a guess what you think that is. It's a mystery to me. On that note, it's goodbye from us on the Mersey Estuary today. Next time you'll see me, I'll be back in London and I'll be mudlarking with Mark Munro, the secret London cabbie. I also have another special guest video coming up with Mock of the Gay Aristo channel and that's a channel which shines a light on LGBTQ plus figures from history. And don't forget we've got the final part of mine and Alessio's Thames Talks, Bone, part three and we've got a very special segment in that so make sure you tune in. And on that note, stay safe and see you next time guys.